As someone who suffered for 18 years with severe cystic acne, I know how it feels to think that you've tried everything and nothing has worked. In fact, I hear many people saying it all the time, especially on social media. Now, I thought I was doing everything because I was doing everything that my doctor told me to do. But not only was my acne not getting better, it was getting worse over time. Welcome to the Radical Health Rebel podcast. I'm your host, Lee Brandon. This work started for me several decades ago when I started to see the impact I could make on people, helping them to identify the root cause of their health problems that no doctor could figure out, including serious back, knee, shoulder and neck injuries, acne and eczema issues, severe gut health problems, even helping couples get pregnant after several IVF treatments had failed. And it really moves me to be able to help people in this way. And that is why I do what I do and why we have this show. Welcome to this episode of the Radical Health Rebel podcast entitled Tried Everything, Yet You Still Have Acne. This is the first part of a two-part episode, and today I'll be discussing acne, the good, the bad, and the ugly. In part two, I'll be discussing what really causes acne, as it's a very misunderstood subject in the mainstream medicine, and will also explain why I believe that to be the case. Now, if you're someone who has never suffered or isn't suffering from acne, I still invite you to listen in, as I believe you will not only find it very interesting, but ultimately very useful in your own health pursuits. As someone who suffered for 18 years with severe cystic acne, I know how it feels to think that you've tried everything and nothing has worked. In fact, I hear many people saying it all the time, especially on social media. Now, I thought I was doing everything because I was doing everything that my doctor told me to do. But not only was my acne not getting better, it was getting worse over time. I had no idea to the myriad of things that I wasn't doing. And the main reason for that was because my doctor didn't as well. Now, what I've learned over the last 23 years or so is that acne, and in fact, most skin issues, are an inside job. The key thing I think people with acne need to appreciate is that only you can heal you. No doctor, pharmaceutical, antibiotic, or skin product is going to work for you in the long term. What you need to do is take charge of your skin from the inside out, and then you will not need to be using any pharmaceuticals or magic creams or potions. By enabling you to take charge of your skin, thereby regaining your self-esteem and confidence, you'll never have to miss out on a social event. You'll prevent ugly scarring on your skin. Your confidence around career prospects and relationships will greatly improve. And you'll have a much more vibrant and happier social life. In addition, you'll no longer have itchy, painful, red, blotchy, unsightly, embarrassing skin. Finally, you will no longer be a slave to your complexion. The techniques I write about in my book, Eliminating Adult Acne for Good, which is available from all major online retailers, are a combination of my personal experience when I finally overcame acne and from the teachings of many experts in the field of health and wellness who contributed to my own education, either through their books or professional training and consulting. In my book, I show several techniques and processes to overcome acne. Now, I regularly use most of the techniques that I share in the book, and I still do them today to maintain clear skin. I went through 18 years of debilitating acne that was quite frankly ruining my life. But since I educated myself, not only have I been able to take care of my own skin without the need for doctors or dermatologists, but I've also successfully helped many others do the same who found their doctor and dermatologist weren't able to help them. What I wish to explain in this episode is why the traditional medical approach doesn't work for most people and why many people believe that they've tried everything yet nothing has worked in the long term. When Hippocrates, the Greek physician, said over 2,000 years ago that it's more important to know what sort of person has a disease than to know what sort of disease a person has, he understood the situation better than many experts today 
with all the latest technology and million dollar research budgets. What Hippocrates understood was that you must treat the whole person, not just the symptoms that they present with. Like any other condition, acne is just the tip of the iceberg, so to speak. Now, if you think of it this way, if you were on a lake in a rowing boat and the boat sprung, sprung a leak and it started filling with water, to prevent the boat from sinking, you'd either throw the water overboard as it comes in or you'd try to find the leak and then you block the hole to stop the water coming in. Well, if you fix the hole, you stop the cause. But if you decide to try to pour the water out, you're just treating the symptom and it will become a never ending job. And using that same analogy, sadly, the medical approach only teaches you how to pour the water out and not how to find the leak and plug the hole. The medical approach is very profitable as it usually requires ongoing indefinite repeat prescriptions despite its lack of success treating acne. When it comes to achieving great skin, it's important to uncover and deal with the cause and not just the symptoms. This is exactly what I explain in my book, Eliminating Adult Acne for Good. Now, what I found is, is that some people can overturn their acne very quickly with just a few tweaks to their diet, whilst others need to address many factors all of which are addressed in the book. Like any health problem, the causes of acne can be due to different things in different people. We are all biochemically individual and therefore react differently to the same things. The same health challenges can be caused by different factors, and this is why some people do well on some medications whilst others don't. It's also why some people have different side effects on the same medications. Now we have to remember that we are not machines, we are a complex system of systems. Now in my coaching practice, I've seen many different things that cause acne, and when the causes are eradicated, the acne simply clears up. So I decided to write the book as I remember the debilitating effects of acne and would really like to help others achieve the same kind of success that I've done and also to learn from my 18 years of mistakes, wasted time, and wasted money. I also wanted to offer a solution to people who couldn't afford to work with me one-to-one -one or on my group coaching program. You know, it breaks my heart when I see people on social media groups asking questions about the magic bullet product, pharmaceutical, or treatment. Sadly, these magic bullets do not exist for most of us. What is important is to understand that achieving clear skin involves going on a journey of education, application and lifestyle change that will not only help you achieve clear skin, but it will also help with so many other areas of your life and your health as well. What's also important to be aware of is that if your body is toxic and just about everyone's is today, once you start on the right path, your skin might temporarily get worse before it gets better. Now, for most, it shouldn't get worse for more than a few days to a few weeks. My skin cleared up very quickly once I knew what the causes were, but this isn't always the case, so you need to be aware of that. Sometimes it can take much longer. It just depends on what the causes are, how long you've been exposed to the causes, and how well you stick to the program. You know, I can lead you to the water but it's down to you to do the drinking, so to speak. By diligently following all the recommendations in my book, your skin will improve. However, just reading the book will not make a difference to anyone's skin. You still need to carry out the recommendations. Now, the recommendations do require some changes to your current routine and a little time and financial investment along the way, which I know for some can be quite a challenge. However, People who choose to follow the recommendations are likely to achieve great skin and improve confidence, self-esteem and career prospects and relationships and reduce the likelihood of unsightly scarring. In addition, others have found the program increases energy levels and helps lose body fat and increase concentration levels, as well as other physical and mental emotional benefits. 
From the age of 13 for 18 years, I suffered greatly from acne. Now, many people who have never suffered from acne might think, well, that's what happens to teenagers, so it's no big deal. However, my acne continued all through my 20s and into my early 30s. Any sufferer of acne can appreciate how psychologically and emotionally debilitating that can be. Then as an adult, you know, I was going for jobs or job promotions, perhaps looking for a new partner or even when in relationships, things got a little challenging to say the least. Most acne sufferers have experienced going for a job interview, a job that you know you can do better than anyone else. And, you know, it's your dream job. You wake up in the morning with nervous excitement and in anticipation of showing them, you know, what you can do and what you offer. Then, uh oh, you feel that feeling, that intense itchiness all over your face, and you know what it is. You put your hand up to your face and you feel the big, hot, itchy bumps. You slowly and nervously walk to the bathroom to look in the mirror to see what's arrived. When you look in the mirror, it's to find that your worst nightmare has appeared on your face, chest, and possibly on your back as well. There were a few times in my 20s that I'm sure my skin cost me a new job or a promotion. So it cost me a lot of money. Other situations I experienced were, you know, going for a night out with bumps on my forehead the size of golf balls and my face looking like a red version of dot to dot. It wasn't exactly confidence building for attracting the ladies. Day after day, I would say, why me? I'm an adult now. This is a child's problem. I visited my doctor several times as a teenager. And in my 20s, I was given antibiotics and advice on cleansers and creams. My doctor told me that acne has absolutely nothing to do with diet, which I later found out to be completely untrue. The antibiotics and creams he prescribed only made my skin worse. I went through 18 years of not really wanting to show my face anywhere, at least on the bad days. I remember thinking when I was in my mid-20s that if someone approached me and said they guarantee they could help me get rid of my acne, I would be willing to remortgage my home. I was really that desperate. Then in 2000, I found out about food intolerances and metabolic typing from Paul Check, the founder of the Czech Institute, during a lecture at Loughborough University in England. The following week, I went to see a Chinese doctor and he tested me for food intolerances. And then he gave me a list of foods to avoid. He also told me I had a candida overgrowth and, avoid, and advised me to follow an antifungal diet. I was also advised to stop using antibiotics that my doctor had been prescribing for 18 years. After two weeks following the recommendations, my skin cleared up. My skin is around 99.999% clear these days. And, you know, I never have to think about or worry about how my skin looks. My skin is now the best it's been since before I was a teenager. And it's a real weight off my shoulders because I can live life to the full without restrictions. In Eliminating Adult Acne for Good, I introduce you to other people that I've helped along the way to overcome their adult acne. And all of their stories are very different, as were the causes of their acne and their solutions. In part two of the book, it's advised to follow each chapter in order and not be tempted to skip any of the chapters. So the order in which each chapter is written is based on my years of personal and professional experience to enable people to achieve clear skin in the shortest possible time. So it's the highest priority action points come first. So people may see results quickly. And this has been the case, I would say, for around 20% of my acne clients over the years. And this is because the root cause of their acne was purely down to diet. For those who don't see results as quickly, it's crucial that you don't lose faith or motivation and stick to the process step by step. Once the door is unlocked to the cause of someone's acne, they will start to see results. It might be balancing your gut microbiome or clearing a specific toxin or two from the body, or it might be a combination of a number of things listed in the book. Lao Tzu once said that every journey starts with a single step. 
your first step to clear skin is to take action and to get started. My book might possibly be the most comprehensive approach to eliminating adult acne anyone will find outside of hiring a very well qualified and skilled professional who, like me, has walked that journey and is now helping others to do the same. Litza was a 30-year-old professional woman suffering from severe acne and scarring. She was in utter despair and didn't know where to turn. She worried that her partner might leave her because of her skin, and Litza's condition was as bad as I've ever seen. Following testing, it was found that Litza had toxoplasma, as well as food sensitivities to gluten and soy. Litza was a great client to work with. She jumped in and followed the program almost 100% to the letter. She cut out the foods that she was sensitive to. She had infrared saunas as advised and used the recommended essential oils. After working with me, Litza reported how much her skin had improved and how she had much more confidence. She's also gone on to marry her partner and started a family. If you would like to achieve the same kind of results as Litza, you can now follow a comprehensive step-by-step -step guide in my brand new book, Eliminating Adult Acne for Good, available now from all major online bookstores and via my website at www.bodycheck.co.uk forward slash books. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about the good, the bad, and the ugly. So what I'm going to do is really outline what is good, bad, and ugly about the current medical approach to acne. So the first thing I really need to describe is what is the current medical acne paradigm? Well, if you ask most medical doctors, they will tell you that acne is formed by a combination of the following factors. Excess androgens, so androgens are male hormones. Excess sebum secreted from the sebaceous gland. So sebum is, is like an oily um, liquid, if you like, that's secreted from the sebaceous glands that are in the hair follicles. Now, the sebaceous glands are stimulated by androgens. So when androgens are at a higher level, you get the sebaceous glands are stimulated to release more sebum or oil. So excess sebum secreted is, you know, well, sebum in itself is there to moisturize the skin, but excess sebum can be released to moisturize dry skin. What can also happen is you get blockages of the pores around the hair follicles due to the excess sebum. And you also get a buildup of dead skin in the hair follicles, causing blockages and a further increase in sebum production to help clear the blockages. The next thing is the bacteria, which is called QT bacterium acnes. It, was all, it used to formally be known as propioni bacterium acnes. Now, propioni bacterium species includes the QT bacterium acnes bacteria. Now, the QT bacterium acnes lives in the pores and they begin to feed and flourish on the blocked sebum and the dead skin. So that's their food, if you like. So they, they feed off of the proteins in the skin and the lipids in the sebum. So when there's a lot more of it, obviously they can, they can flourish. But then what then happens is when there's a lot more of the bacteria, you get inflammation to deal with the bacterial infection. But the problems are not so much the increase in the androgens or the blocked pores or the bacteria building up on the dead skin. But what is causing the increase in the androgens, the blocked pores, the infections and the inflammation? So the medical model is really looking at it from a symptomatic point of view. And not addressing the underlying cause is why skin creams and cleansers do not work for most people in the, in the long run. These products merely mask the symptoms if you're lucky. Most of the time, they don't even do that. So you might be able to keep clearing the skin, but the underlying cause is still there. Now, doctors sometimes give women the contraceptive pill to balance their hormones. But the question is, what's causing the hormones to be out of balance in the first place? You know, unless these answers are found and dealt with, the problem, i.e. acne, will continue to bubble up under the surface and rear its head whenever it likes. 
acne is not caused by a deficiency in cleansing creams, antibiotics, or a lack of synthetic hormones. According to Dr. William Kellas and Dr. Andrea Dworkin in their book, Thriving in a Toxic World, acne can be caused by too much cadmium, mercury, sugar, microorganisms, or allergies. And I tackle each of those subjects throughout my book. Research suggests that there is a link between an increase in the hormone insulin and insulin-like growth factor 1, or IGF-1, and acne. Research suggests that these increased hormone levels can be caused by, uh, firstly, an increase in sebum production, two, increasing generation of skin cells, and three, dead skin cells sticking together. Now, the hypothesis suggests that a faster generation of skin cells causes more dead skin cells to be pushed through the skin's pores. When dead skin cells stick together, they're pushed through the skin's pores in large quantities rather than one skin cell at a time. Then you have a lot of sticky sebum, which is likely to lead to blocked pores and breakouts. One thing I must also make clear is that your skin is your largest organ and it's an organ of detoxification. Dr. Ben Johnson of Osmosis Beauty is unconvinced that acne is caused by a bacterial infection, as described by the medical establishment, and believes that acne is caused by the skin purging toxins from the body. Your skin is a really good barometer of how well you're doing on the inside. In my view, acne is a condition caused by an imbalance of one or more of the body's uh, systems. In my book, I explain how to balance the body systems, thereby improving the skin. This is exactly how my clients and I did it and how we maintain clear skin as well. What's quite interesting is that according to the UK's National Health Service, and I quote, there is no evidence that diet plays a role in acne. Well, I'll leave you to ponder that statement and I'll come back to that later. Now, what I want to explain now are the effects of traditional medical acne treatments. So I'm going to explain their positive and their negative effects and why they're still recommended, even though they generally don't work. So again, what I'm going to be uncovering here is what I call the good, the bad and the ugly. So there are four main medical approaches that tend to be used for acne. Number one is antibiotics. Number two is combined contraceptives for females. Three, other hormone treatments. And finally, topical creams and cleansers. Now, antibiotics used for acne include erythromycin, tetracycline, doxycycline, and minocycline, amongst others. Now, whilst antibiotics can be effective in the short term, Long-term use can be detrimental for your overall health. So if the antibiotics are effective, you still need to stop taking them long-term because it's not safe to continue losing them long-term. In almost all cases, the acne will just bounce back once they're stopped. And quite often, it bounces back even worse. Now, if antibiotics are used long-term, as I did, as well as not always being effective, they often make the acne worse. And also, they can cause antibiotic resistance and damage the gut microbiome, and the gut microbiome is crucial to your health. Antibiotic resistance can cost you your life if antibiotics don't work when you need them to keep you alive after you are you know, in a serious accident or if you've had surgery, as an example. As well as killing the QT bacterium acnes, antibiotics also kill the commensal or beneficial bacteria that arguably play the most important role in our overall health. Almost all disease is linked with a dysbiosis or what we would call poor microbiome balance. Antibiotics leave the door wide open to pathogenic bacteria and fungi, which may also cause acne and many other diseases. Studies have shown that those who use topical or oral antibiotics are three times as likely, for instance, to show an increase uh, of bacteria in the throat and tonsils 
compared with non-users. Long-term use of antibiotics in acne treatment is also associated with an increase in upper respiratory infections and skin bacteria and has been shown to affect blood sugar levels as well. We need to be aware of the potential consequences when we use antibiotics and carefully weigh the risks versus the benefits. So next I'm going to talk about the contraceptive pills and they're given to women to reduce the level or effect of androgens or male hormones in the body. Though they tend to be effective in reducing acne whilst in use, the acne tends to worsen when the contraceptive is stopped. According to the UK's NHS website as the National Health Service, taken over the long term, female contraceptives have been linked with the following. Blood clots, including deep vein thrombosis, pulmonary embolisms, stroke, also heart attacks, high blood pressure, breast, cervical, endometrial, ovarian, bowel and liver cancers, osteoporosis, gallbladder disease and also zinc deficiency. So, you know, I would seriously question the risk versus benefit of using uh, hormonal contraceptives in order to combat acne when you consider that the potential side effects are actually a lot, lot worse than acne itself. But again, everyone needs to make their own decision on that. When we look at other hormone treatments, the one that's probably used I guess maybe the most is called isotretinoin, used to be called Accutane. And that's generally only given for severe acne or when all other medical avenues have been tried. Now, sadly, it's used quite regularly as the other treatments are often ineffective in the long term. Isotretinoin works by unclogging pores, reducing the stickiness of keratinocytes inside the follicle. So the keratinocytes, they make keratin, which forms um, skin cells. It slows down sebum production and it helps to shrink the sebaceous glands. Now, isotretinoin can be effective, but the question is at what cost? Again, according to the UK's uh, NHS website, the side effects include, and I'm quoting here, your skin may become very dry and sensitive to sunlight during treatment. Using lip balm and moisturizers will help. It's very important not to become pregnant whilst using isotretinoin capsules and for at least a month after stopping. This is because isotretinoin can harm an unborn baby. If you become depressed or think about harming yourself while taking isotretinoin, stop taking the medicine and tell your doctor straight away. Your skin may become more sensitive to sunlight. You may experience dry eyes. You may experience a dry throat. You may experience a dry nose and nosebleeds. You may suffer from headaches and general aches and pains. You may experience anxiety, aggression, violence, changes in mood or suicidal thoughts. These can be signs of depression and or other mental health problems. You may feel severe pain in your stomach with or without diarrhea and feeling or being sick which would normally include nausea or vomiting. These can be signs of a serious problem called pancreatitis. You may also have uh, bloody diarrhea. This may be a sign of gastrointestinal bleeding. You may have a serious skin rash that peels or has blisters. The skin rash may come with eye infections, ulcers, fever or headaches. You might find it difficult to move your arms or legs, have painful swollen or bruised areas of the body or dark pee, these can be signs of muscle weakness. Your skin or the whites of your eyes might turn yellow. You might have difficulty peeing or feel very tired. These are signs of liver or kidney problems. You may have a bad headache that doesn't go away and makes you feel sick or be sick. There may be sudden changes in eyesight, including not seeing as well at night. Isotretinoin capsules can sometimes cause depression or make it worse, and can even make some people feel suicidal. So it's quite interesting when you look at isotretinoin, it's probably the most successful in terms of getting rid of your acne. But the question is, at what cost? You know, if you end up committing suicide or you have liver or kidney failure, was it really worth it? And, and also, 
a lot of the effects of isotretinoin are permanent. So when it says, you know, it it helps prevent sebum being released from the sebaceous gland, well, your your sebum is what moisturizes your skin. So you could end up with dry skin for the rest of your life. So you've gone from having one skin problem to another, but but now the skin problem that you have now is irreversible. So again, you have to think really carefully before making a decision in terms of what route you want to go down. Another hormone often given uh, to women is called spironolactone. And it's you know usually prescribed for high blood pressure, heart failure, and swelling, but also used to reduce acne symptoms in women. So it works by slowing the production of androgens. And common side effects of spironolactone for girls and women, according to the UK's NHS website, can include breast tenderness and or breast enlargement, painful and or irregular periods, as well as vaginal bleeding after menopause, hair loss, photosensitivity, which is sensitivity to UV rays from the sun and other light sources, nausea and vomiting, and drowsiness. So again, it may well help with your symptoms in the short term, but what happens if you stop taking it? Well, quite often your acne comes back and it comes back worse. Or if you keep taking it, now you've got an increased risk of those other issues. So again, you might have just swapped one issue for another one, and it might be an, another issue that's worse than your acne. So again, you just need to f- decide carefully which approach you would rather take. Colsiprindiol is another hormone treatment prescribed for women, um, generally for, again, for severe acne that didn't respond to antibiotics. What it does, it helps to reduce the production of sebum and the side effects of cosimprindiol include bleeding and spotting between periods, headaches, sore breasts, mood changes, low libido, weight gain or weight loss, blood clots and breast cancer. So again, you've got to really weigh up the risks versus the benefits before taking a product like this. And again, you know, cosimprindiol does not address the why of any hormone imbalance. It only attempts to mask the symptoms. So if we now look at topical treatments, so the first one I'm going to talk about is one that I actually used for for 18 years, and it's called benzoyl peroxide. And it works as an antiseptic to reduce the amount of bacteria on the surface of the skin. It also helps reduce the number of whiteheads and blackheads and has an anti-inflammatory effect. Benzoyl peroxide is advertised as a six-week treatment and common side effects of benzoyl peroxide, according to the UK's National Health Service website, are dry and tense skin, a burning, itching or or stinging sensation, some redness and peeling of the skin, and it also permanently stains when it comes into contact with carpets. Now, interestingly, I experienced all of those symptoms when I was using benzoyl peroxide. So I had dry, tense skin. I had burning, itching, or stinging sensation. I had redness and peeling. And I also had permanent staining of the carpet in my bedroom. So I had every one of those symptoms, but yet it didn't help with my acne. And my guess is the reason it didn't help with my acne was because it wasn't getting to the root cause of the problem. My acne wasn't caused by a benzoyl peroxide deficiency. Leah was a 27-year-old who worked in insurance. Leah had never made much of an effort to eat healthily, and she loved chocolate. Before the age of 27, she ate whatever she wanted, and she managed to maintain a very healthy figure and a completely clear skin. So it was a big shock to her when she broke out for the first time in her life, just months away from her wedding. Leah was in a panic because she didn't want bad skin on her wedding day. After testing, it was found that Leah had a minor dysbiosis and a parasite infection that may or may not have been causing health issues, as sometimes parasites can be present without causing problems. I advised Leah on her nutrition and lifestyle and helped improve her gut microbiome. A few months in, there was some but not much improvement in Leah's skin, and she was in a state of panic. At that point, I tested for heavy metals, and it turned out that Leah had very high levels of mercury in her blood. When explaining the potential causes, I mentioned that fish, especially tuna, has mercury in it, and it turns out that Leah had eaten tuna for lunch every day for years. 
I advised Leah to use liposomal glutathione to help remove the mercury from her blood. And in a matter of weeks, Leah's skin was back to normal. If you'd like to achieve the same kind of result as Leah, you can now follow a comprehensive step-by-step guide in my brand new book, Eliminating Adult Acne for Good, available now from all major online bookstores and via my website at www.bodycheck.co.uk forward slash books. Now, the next one is salicylic acid, and that works to dissolve the dead skin cells that are clogging the pores. Again, according to the UK's NHS, it can cause skin irritation, skin dryness, skin tingling or stinging, itching, peeling skin and hives. Another one is azelaic acid, and it's often used as an alternative treatment to benzoyl peroxide or topical retinoids. It works by getting uh, rid of the dead skin and killing the bacteria. Side effects of azelaic acid, again, according to the UK's NHS, include burning or stinging skin, itchiness, dry skin, and redness of the skin. So again, when using these products, you really need to carefully weigh up the potential benefits versus the potential risks. Now, I do have a confession to make here. You know, I need to be completely transparent. My clients, when they've worked with me to help move their acne, have also reported side effects. So my clients have reported reduced body fat, more energy, a calmer tummy, better bowel movements. They're sleeping better. They've got improved concentration, more confidence, a better social life, less anxiety, less stress. They feel better about themselves. They don't need to wear tons of makeup to go out. And ultimately, they're feeling happier. But don't worry, I do explain how to achieve these types of results in the book. Now, when you look at the side effects from the medical solutions currently being offered by the chemical pharmaceutical medical establishments and compare them to the side effects my clients report using a natural holistic approach, I hope that you'll begin to understand the risk benefit ratio existing between the two approaches. One approach, which is often ineffective, has been shown to cause antibiotic resistance, blood clots, heart attacks, high blood pressure, cancer, strokes, headaches, general aches and pains, anxiety, aggression, violence, changes in mood, suicidal thoughts, mental health problems, severe stomach pain, nausea or vomiting, pancreatitis, gastrointestinal bleeding, serious skin rashes, breast tenderness and or breast enlargement, painful and or irregular periods, vaginal bleeding, hair loss, low libido, weight gain, blood clots, dry and tight skin, burning, itching or stinging skin, redness and peeling of the skin, and much more. The other approach that I share in my new book, in addition to improving acne, has been shown in some cases to also cause reduced body fat, more energy, a calmer tummy, better bowel movements, better sleep, better concentration, more confidence, an improved social life, the reduced need to wear makeup, feeling less anxious, less stressed, and better about themselves and feeling happier overall. So in terms of looking at the risk benefit ratio, which approach would you suggest would be most attractive to you? You know, and I'm not here to tell you what you should do, but rather to help educate you so that you can make the right decisions for you. So I'm often confronted by people asking me, why is the medical approach allowed to continue? And why don't doctors know more or do more? Well, sadly, it comes down to market forces and economics. Whilst we're led to believe that the medical establishment and their colleagues in the pharmaceutical industry have a common goal to help people achieve optimal health, sadly, this isn't the case. I'm not for one second suggesting that people working in these industries are bad or consciously doing harm. I am aware that in some circumstances, they do amazing things. However, money talks. What you may or may not be aware of is that with their huge financial clout, the pharmaceutical industry has a lot of influence in several sectors. Firstly, they heavily subsidize the education of medical doctors and in return have almost complete control over the curriculum. Pharmaceutical companies also have a major influence over the organizations 
that are supposed to regulate them. I'll put a link in the show notes of a table that displays how much funding for pharmaceutical regulators comes from the very companies that they're supposed to regulate in each country. If you look at the table, in the case of Australia, this is as much as 96% of their funding comes from the pharmaceutical industry. So I think it would be naive to think that these companies invest that much money without expecting some kind of return on their investment. Some might even suggest that this is a case of the fox guarding the chicken coop. Sadly, corruption is rife when it comes to the pharmaceutical regulation. There is a constant revolving door of of regulators authorizing products who then join the companies standing to make billions from the products they approved and often without proper safety testing, but with the reward of a multi-million dollar salary. Through the lobbying of government officials and politicians, pharmaceutical companies have a huge influence over government policies to maximize their profits. According to Statista, in 2022, the pharmaceutical industry gave $306 million to US politicians alone, which is not a bad gig if you're a US politician without ethics or morals. In addition, pharmaceutical companies and their government agency partners control research funding. This means that research is only performed in order to make their products look good and further their business interests and profit margins. This was illustrated very well in Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s book, The Real Anthony Fauci. Having performed a lot of research on acne, I've discovered that much research is performed on medical products. Whilst there are some research papers on nutrition and acne, there is little profit to be made from nutritional advice. And due to the huge expense of research, it means that there is no profit to be made. The research in this area is therefore relatively limited. I also noticed that, as is the case with most research, studies performed on acne are rarely, if ever, longer than six to 12 weeks. My own experience, you know, suffering from acne and using pharmaceutical products is that I achieved a short term reduction in symptoms, but in the long term, they made my acne worse. A research paper might suggest that a particular product is effective, however, If the study was followed up at one, five or 10 year intervals, chances are there would be a completely different outcome. Very sadly, our medical pharmaceutical industry, first and foremost, has a responsibility to its shareholders. The shareholders of any business are there to make money. That's what a commercial enterprise does, or it would be a charity. So what we have is a medical system whose priority it is to make as much profit as possible and continue to increase the growth of their profits year on year. What we do not have is a medical system that prioritizes the health outcomes of its patients. The pharmaceutical industry sees you as a consumer. As an industry that exists to make as much money as possible, prolonged illnesses and diseases are how they make their money. This means that if they can keep you in a state of dis-ease, they can continue to make money from you. The longer you have acne, and the more you try their products, the more money they make. If you completely cure your acne, you are no longer profitable to them. What you might also find interesting is that the pharmaceutical companies have received the largest criminal fines in history, adding up to several billions of dollars for making misleading claims about their products' efficacy and safety, for fraud, and for bribing medical doctors, to name but a few infractions. These companies are so rich and powerful that they can put these huge fines down to marketing costs and still make huge profits. I previously mentioned that the pharmaceutical companies have great influence over the curriculum of medical degrees. Well, a large portion of medical training includes the study of symptomology and pharmacology. Doctors are trained that if they see a certain symptom, there are options as to which pharmaceutical interventions they might use to treat the symptom. The problem with this approach is it encourages dependence on medication and does not attempt to deal with the causes of the dis-ease in the first place. If you present with acne, you might be offered antibiotics or benzoyl peroxide cream for your acne, but that does not deal with the cause. Even if the treatment works in the long term, which is unlikely, you are likely to suffer negative side effects and be reliant on these products for the rest of your life, 
along with other pharmaceutical products prescribed to deal with the side effects of the acne medications. What this does is create great repeat business for the companies making the products without helping you overcome your acne in the long term. Now, I do have sympathy for medical doctors. I believe that most of them are genuinely trying to help. And there are a small minority of fantastic doctors who go way beyond their training to provide a highly effective service. Sadly, for most doctors, their training has let them down. When speaking to several doctors in recent years, they tell me that in their seven years of medical school, they receive between zero and four hours of nutrition training. This might be why the UK's National Health Service still believes that there is no link between diet and acne and why they don't really know how to treat patients with acne with any great success. So just to summarize what I've already gone through today, the medical establishment teaches us that there is no evidence that diet is related to acne. There are multiple biological and chemical steps involved in the formation of acne. Androgens, insulin and insulin-like growth factor 1 or IGF-1 are thought to be involved in the cause of acne. Excess sebum production, blocked skin pores, proliferation of the C acnes bacteria and inflammation may lead to acne formation. Skin creams, lotions, hormone pills and antibiotics tend not to work for most people as they do not get to the root cause of acne. The skin is the largest detoxification organ, so acne can be a barometer of imbalance on the inside of your body. And whilst there are some successful outcomes with the current medical approaches to acne, they do not work more often than not. And there are serious uh, side effects, including death, that can happen when using these products. Following a natural holistic approach that has proven successful treats the underlying causes of acne and often comes with several positive side effects. The medical establishment and its regulators are heavily controlled by corporations whose main objectives is to make money. The training of medical doctors is heavily controlled by these corporations and the outcomes of patients are not a high priority for corporations. Their priority first and foremost is to their shareholders. There is much money to be made in keeping people in a state of disease and the healing of disease would be harmful to these powerful corporations. Sadly, the sufferers of acne get caught in the crossfire. In part two of this episode, I will share with you what most doctors don't know, what really causes acne. So that's all from me today. And don't forget, you can join me same time, same place next week on the Radical Health Rebel podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Remember to give the show a rating and a review, and I'll see you next time.